Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you some advanced tips for using the Go To Folder command in the Mac Finder. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 2,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now a Mac user can go their whole eyes without ever using the Go To Folder command. It's in the Go menu. And it's right here, Go To Folder. And it allows you to type to go to a specific folder instead of navigating around using your mouse or a trackpad. Now my first tip is that nobody ever uses it with the menu item. The whole point is to use the keyboard to navigate around so you wouldn't want to start by using the pointer to activate it. Instead, you want to use the keyboard shortcut, Shift-Command-G. So that's what I'll do throughout this entire video. So Shift-Command-G will bring it up. Of course you have to be using a Finder window for this to happen. It doesn't take you to the Finder automatically. But there are some other cases I'll talk about later where you can use this special command. Now how it works is pretty simple. You can type the path to a folder and then press return and it will jump to it. So for instance I have a folder called Projects in my Documents folder. I could type the full path to it. So that would be slash users macmost slash documents slash projects. And then if I press return you can see it jumps to that folder. But the whole point is to get somewhere fast which means that typing a full path name from the top level doesn't make much sense. Fortunately you don't have to do that. You could start typing the name of a folder from the current location. So I'm in my Documents folder here and I could see for instance there's a folder called Notes. If I type Notes it will recognize that I'm already in my Documents folder and find the Notes folder. Likewise, it will also look in the Home folder. So for instance in your Home folder you've got folders like Music, Pictures, Downloads, and such. So I can start typing there. You'll see you'll have a section here called Go To Folder in Current Location and Go To and then it's going to have your Home folder here. So you can very quickly get to this folder if it's in your Home folder. You can click on it but you can also use the down arrow to get to it and then press Return. Users at the terminal will recognize also that you can use shortcuts like tilde which is the key above the tab key on US keyboards. You need to use shift to use tilde and slash and that will indicate your home folder. So you can see how it already includes the path to my home folder there. And you could also use period slash to represent the current folder, in this case documents, and then type there. Some people prefer to do that especially if you use the terminal a lot. Now another way to speed things up is you can autocomplete using the Tab key. So for instance I'm here in my Documents folder and let's say I want to go to the folder named PDF Examples. You can see it here at the bottom. So I can start typing PDF Examples and as soon as I type enough to make that the top choice there I can just press Tab and it will fill the entire thing in. If it's ambiguous which one I mean so I'll just type P here and there are a bunch of folders that start with P. If I press Tab it will fill in the first one but not autocomplete it and a second time I press Tab it will give me a system beep so in other words telling me it still doesn't know which one I want but if I do it a third time it actually will do it. You could also just use the down arrow. So I can type P and then I can use down arrow to go to the one I want. Once I'm there pressing Tab will autocomplete. Likewise using Tab to get to something then Return will actually just jump there. So if I type P right here and I go down to Personal, press Return and it will jump right there. I didn't even have to autocomplete since I had selected it with the down arrow. Now notice it also recognizes Recent here and you can just start typing something that's in a Recent folder there. So for instance I've got the Movies folder which isn't in my current location. I'm in Documents now. But if I start typing Movies it We'll pick that out of the Recents and I can just press Return and it will jump there. Now if you want to access external drives you can do that as well. I could do that by explicitly typing slash and then volumes and then slash and then start typing the name of the volume. So A for instance for Archive and there it is. I can tab to Auto Complete and then continue to search or I could have just hit Return to go to it. But you don't typically need to actually type slash volumes. You could just type the name of the drive and if it's a recent place you've been to it should find it just with that name. 
Now, one advantage to using go to folder is you can just as easily get to hidden folders as anywhere else. So for instance, if I were to go to my home folder here, I won't see my library folder there. It's there, but it's hidden. I can get to it by going to the Go menu and holding down the Option key and there it is. And I could see that it's located in my home folder like that. But I could also use Go to Folder and type this and you can see it'll find it just like anything else. Now I know there are people that also like to get into packages. Packages are basically folders that masquerade as files. They actually have a bunch of files in them. For instance, libraries typically are packages. So you can get into this by using control click, right click, or two finger click on a trackpad and then show package contents. And once I'm in here, for instance, I could see all the different iMovie projects. So here's one called Example, for instance. And my path now includes getting into the package. Well, you can do the same thing using Go to Folder without having to open the package. So I can go back up to this level here and there's that iMovie library. I can start typing and there's the iMovie library there. I can auto complete it like that, type slash, and I can actually look inside it. So there's that folder inside the package and I can jump right to it. So a quick way to get into package files. Now I mentioned before that go to folder only works in the finder but there's an exception. That exception is dialog boxes where you're asked to either open, save, or export something to a location on your drive. These are basically like little mini finder windows. So for instance, here I am in Pages and if I were to go to save this document for the first time using Command S or File Save, I'm now in a File Save dialog. And you can use Shift Command G to bring up the Go To Folder box here and type in it. So I can go to Documents and say Projects like that. And then when I press Return, it changes the location to that location and now I can save. The same thing is true when you go to open a document. Go to open, I can do Shift Command G and it brings up the Go To Folder box. It works when you export too. So I can select a few photos there. I can do File, Export, Export These Photos, select my options and then I'm in the Export dialog here to choose a location. I can do Shift Command G there as well. And you can actually use Go To Folder to access tags even though that really has nothing to do with folders. So notice here I've got several different tags. I can access those by typing the name of the tag. So I'll bring up the box and then I'll start typing the name of a tag like that. And you'll see Go To and then it shows Tags and that tag. When I select it, it's the same as if I selected the tag here in the left sidebar. But an advantage is that you can access tags that aren't in the sidebar. Under all tags I saw there was a business tag for instance and that's not in the sidebar here. So I'll use go to folder and I'll type business and there's the business tag. I could just use the down arrow to go to it and return and now I'm seeing all the files that have that tag applied. Now I can actually do more than just change the location of the current finder window with go to folder. So let's go to daily reports. I'll auto complete that and then file reports and autocomplete that. Now if I were to press return it would simply take me to that folder. It changes the location. However, if instead I hold the command key down and press return it opens up a new tab leaving that previous location in another tab like that. Now this only happens if in Finder Settings you've got under General Open Folders and Tabs instead of New Windows. Now. I can also open up a new window using the same command but this time I'm going to do Option and Command and then Return. And now I get a second window leaving that original window untouched. And there's one more. If you instead hold Shift Command and then press Return or click, you will open up the Terminal app and go directly to this location. So you can see that I'm located there in the new Terminal window. Now notice how I auto-completed daily reports and filed reports by typing the first few letters of each. You can do that but you also can take the first letter of each word. This is an interesting trick. You've got D and R for daily reports and F and R for filed reports. Watch what happens if I type DR. It recognizes daily reports and it even bolds those two letters there. 
And it even finds some other things. Developer has D and it ends with an R and doc folders has D and it's got an R towards the end there. These should be either things in your current location or recent finds. So I can now tap tab to autocomplete that and type FR and it finds filed reports and then tab to autocomplete that. So you can use long folder names with lots of words be really descriptive and know that in go to folder you can easily access them by just typing the first letter of each word. Now one of the things about using this is that if I were to use it right now I'd end up inside of filed reports. What if I wanted to actually go to the folder above it but have filed reports just the highlighted or selected folder. You can do that but you have to use your mouse or trackpad. You need that to bring up the context menu with a right click or control click or two finger click on a trackpad. And if you do that then you have show enclosing folder. You do that and now you get the enclosing folder shown and then the folder that was indicated there that is selected. Note that it depends where you click. If I were to do that here in daily reports and show enclosing folder then it's actually going to go to the documents folder and select daily reports. So it's reacting to the actual thing you're clicking on here. So do it for the last one if that's what you want. Now sometimes you can actually use go to folder to go to a file. So for instance here in the business folder I've got a bunch of different files. I've got a bunch of them named project report for instance. Some text files, PDF files and things like that. So I can use go to folder then I can start typing business here and autocomplete that. Do a slash and now if I typed P for project report. Notice it does bring up files. So I can now go down select one of these files. If I press return at this point what happens is it goes to that folder and has that file selected. So it doesn't actually open the file. It just goes to it and shows it to you. But you can control click, two finger click or right click on this and choose open if you want. Although it's just as easy to go to it and then do command O on the keyboard and it will open it up so you don't have to use your mouse or trackpad to get there. So if you like using the go to folder command in the finder or you're just discovering it now for the first time there are a bunch of advanced tips to help you make the most of it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.